This video is brought to you by Monster Insights. Do you need to increase the speed and performance of your WordPress website? We'll keep watching. Throughout this video, I'm going to walk you through how to install and set up WP Rocket. WP Rocket is a caching plugin that helps improve your WordPress website performance. So if you're ready, let's dive in. One of the first things we want to do is we want to test our site and see how it's doing first. You can test it on a few things. GT Metrics is a website where you can put in your website address. Pingdom is another one. And for this one, we're going to use Pingdom. It's a simple way to show you how your site is doing. So you can go to tools.pingdom.com or simply search for Pingdom site speed and this will come up. And what we want to do is go ahead and add in our website address here. The demo site that I'm going to use is this and you can test it. You can choose here where to test it. I'm simply just going to use Washington. It's just because it's closer. You can choose where to test it. Just make sure that whatever you test before is the same one that you test after. And that's what we're wanting to do. We want to test our site and see the performance of it first before we install and set up WP Rocket. This gives us a good idea of just how well WP Rocket is helping speed up our site. So looking at the performance, we see we have a 73. The page size is 2.1 meg and the load time is 1.54. And this site is a demo site. It has some what we call dummy content. There's some posts that are on there. It's a older theme that's on here. And so do that as well for your site before you install WP Rocket. For me, I'm going to just go ahead and get a snapshot of this. So I'll have it later. The next thing we want to do is we want to get WP Rocket. We'll have a link in the description below, or you can simply go to WP Beginner forward slash refer forward slash WP dash Rocket. WP Rocket is a premium plugin, but the cool thing is all of the features that you need are in all of their pricing tiers, which means the only difference in the pricing is whether you install this on one site versus unlimited sites, but all of the features that you need to speed up your website are in the lowest tier. So once you buy WP Rocket, let's head back over to our WordPress dashboard so we can install and set it up. So from the dashboard, we're going to go to plugins, add new, and instead of searching for it, we're actually going to upload a plugin, go choose file and find where we just saved that. Once you find it, let's go ahead and click install now. And then we'll also want to stick around to activate the plugin as well. Great. Now that it's activated, we can actually go in and test it immediately just to see how it does without doing anything else. So we had this before and let's go ahead and start the test again. And then once we do that, we'll see the difference. And then we'll also go in and I'll show you some of the changes that you can make for your site. Now you see, without even doing anything, we've already speed up our time, our load time by it used to load at 1.54 seconds and 1.13. And this is a very small site. It has very little bit on there and we've already done a better job of in improving the load time. So now let's go through and make the changes to the site. And to get to WP Rocket to make changes, just scroll down to the settings area and WP Rocket. And from here, we can start making changes. You see that they even say they've already started caching a lot of our pages and we can even make some further changes here. So let's go through that and I'll show you some of the things that you'll want to look at. So the first one we want to look at is the cache tab and caching is what's going to really improve the site's performance. And that just means that they're going to create like static files of your website so that when people come to it, then it's already there for them. And enable caching is already turned on, but you may want to even turn on separate cache file for mobile users. That just simply means the desktop users, when they come to their site, they'll get their own cache versus the mobile users. Anyone who comes with a smartphone and looks at your site, then they'll see a separate caching system for them. The user cache, that's if you have a website where people log into your site, then you'll want to enable this. And that's only for, say, if you have a store like a WooCommerce store, or if you have a membership site where people are logging in, or maybe even a tutorial site or a learning management site, then this would be good for them. Most people won't have that, so you don't have to worry about turning that on. The cache lifespan. 
that's just how long this snapshot will be and it's 10 hours by default which is great for most websites if you are a website that does a lot of updates on your website daily like if you're a new site or something like that you might want to decrease this number and like maybe have it cache every two hours or three hours uh, definitely think about it how your how your website is for most 10 hours is more than enough and then if you never update your website then you could probably even go up with that if you want and you see it even tells you you may want to consider reducing it if you're seeing issues and that's simply if you update your website a lot then you'll want to increase the number of times that they go out and cache it and since we made some changes let's go ahead and click save changes here and now we can go to file optimization and basically this is where you can minify things and all that means is it will reduce things on your files like html or reduce the white space or comments and make the file smaller you can also combine Google font files scrolling down. You can also combine or minify the CSS files or the JavaScript files. A lot of times for a website, it's not going to do a whole lot for you and it could also cause some other issues. So you'll want to just be careful and play with the setting and see how it does for your site and play with it without play with it before and after and make sure that your site looks okay. For a lot of people, you'll probably just want to leave this setting as it is. Now, if you have a large site, this might work well for you to minify, minify some of these things. But again, just go through and see how it works for your site. But for most people, we'll just leave this as is. Now, the next thing we want to do is go to media. Media is a great way to improve the page size and speed of your site. Images are the second largest issue with websites behind video simply because a lot of people accidentally upload very large images that aren't optimized for the web. And so that causes issues. Now, this isn't going to help that necessarily. And you'll want to watch this video on how to improve your image for performance and speed on your website. We also have that in the description below on a tutorial on how to do that. But once you do optimize for the web and once you upload it, then you can turn on something called lazy load. All that means is the website won't show or won't load the images until the user gets to that. This is a really great feature. They'll also be able to do that for iframes and videos. So a great thing is when you upload videos to YouTube and then you embed them on your site, it's way faster than if you had them on your site itself. However, when you go out and when your website goes out and grabs that information from YouTube, there is still a bit of a lag because it has to go out to the YouTube and grab it down. So there's a little bit of a performance hit when you do that and you can enable lazy load for those as well. And all that means is if somebody doesn't go all the way down to that image, it won't load. So it should keep your website running fast so we can enable it for those. The cool thing about this also is in future update, WordPress itself will actually enable this for images in one of the next releases. But for now, WP Rocket does a great job and they do it for YouTube as well. Scrolling down, you see that disabled emoji is also turned on by default. And that simply will default the emojis to the user's browser rather than doing them from WordPress.org. So WordPress.org won't have to bring the emojis. The user's browser should do that. You can also choose to disable WordPress embed. So people can grab a link to your website and they can add it in their website. And that kind of brings in a little box that will preview your content and you can disable that ability if you want to. Okay, and let's go ahead and save these changes. Next, we're going to scroll down and go to preload. And preload is just when WP Rocket will generate the cache starting immediately. And we already have that on by default and it will just go out and do that. You can activate preloading. You could also choose to activate the sitemap and basically you can just upload the sitemap that your site has so that WP Rocket already knows the list of all of your pages and posts. And since we have Yoast installed here, we can say generate that from the Yoast XML or from the Yoast plugin. If you know your sitemap address, you can simply put it in there. And usually it is something like this, your site and the XML. So you could do that as well. And we'll save changes. And going down the list, we're going to go to advanced rules. Now, advanced rules are really set up more for 
say power users or developers, I would just leave this as is. But if you're a developer or a power user and you want to get into the more advanced caching techniques, you can do that here. For most users and their websites, you won't need to worry about that. Scrolling down to database, you can do post cleanups and by default, WordPress has revision. So anytime you create a new edit your post or create a new post, it houses the revisions that you've had. And some people like to keep all of this clean. It's not really going to speed up your site. So it's nothing to concern yourself about. Same thing with comments. You can have them clean up comments, but WordPress after 30 days will automatically clean up spam and comment trash comments. So you're okay with that. Same thing with transients and a database. This is just great for people who just like to keep everything clean, but by and large, most people won't need to do this. And as you see, if you do schedule automatic cleanups, make sure you have backups. You should always have backups anyway, but there's just always that chance that if you're deleting something, something bad might happen. So make sure that you have a backup first. Scrolling down to the CDN. Now a CDN is simply a content delivery network. And all that means is if you're the server where your website is housed is say in Houston or Salt Lake City is a big one, but a user is coming from Europe to see your website, they'll have to get the information straight from Salt Lake City, Utah, America over to Europe. And what a content delivery system or network will do is it'll have all these bits of pieces of like your images and some content on these little areas all around the world maybe in on a server that's closer, maybe in Berlin. So they'll just have to go to Berlin to get your images versus coming all the way over or coming all the way over to Utah. And you can do that. If you want to set up a CDN, for instance, WP Beginner uses Max CDN by StackPath. You can go in and add all of that in here. That's a little bit out of the scope of this, but we'll have a link in the description below on how to set up a CDN so it can run with this. And like I said, we use Mac CDN, but there's also a, another good one called Cloudflare and there are a free version of that. If you want to use them, just check also with your hosting provider to see if they have Cloudflare as a free service. You can do that. And security is another one that you can do. And then scrolling down. So the heartbeat, this is a heartbeat API is a way for your WordPress website to kind of talk or send out a request to the hosting server to make sure everything is go, good to go. And what this does is, for an instance, if you're in a post and you're writing a post and somebody else wants to go in and maybe edit an area, it'll say that it's locked. And that's because the Heartbeat API is checking all the time to see what's the status of your post and what's the status of your website. You can control this. And if you, you don't want to turn it off, but you can control it by reducing the number of times that it does this. And if you see, you can reduce activity. It'll change the frequency from one hit each minute to one every two minutes. And then you don't want to disable it completely simply because a lot of plugins and things do use this API, but you can do that. And this will help if you have a really large site to reduce that if you want to, but we do not recommend disabling it. That will just break everything. So we're going to say control it. And this is what will set it up. Just reduce activity. It's just reducing it a little bit. Go ahead and click save changes. And then we can look at a couple of their add-ons just to show you some of them. So for instance, the Google tracking add-on that's if, okay, so let's get back here. The pingdom, a lot of people, they really want to get a hundred. You don't really need to get a hundred to improve your performance grade, but there are just some people who want that 100 performance grade for the website. So they will turn on the Google tracking and that just allows you to add the code on your website. So it's not having to go and talk to Google every time. Same thing with the Facebook pixel. If you're using a Facebook pixel for user tracking, then if you turn this on, you can add the code here so it doesn't have to talk to Facebook. And with varnish, this is simply a caching service that your hosting provider will have. If your hosting provider uses Varnish, then you'll want to turn this on. And basically all that does is once WP Rocket clears its cache and renews it then or purges it, then Varnish will do the same thing. So it's kind of a domino effect. So check with your hosting provider to see if they even use it. And if they do, go ahead and turn that on. And then down here, these are the 
CDNs that we talked about where you can turn these on and integrate your Cloudflare account with this. And then scrolling down to tools, this is a great import export feature. So if you have multiple websites that you're wanting to install this on, then you can export all these settings. Everything that we've done right now, we can just export and download those and then go to the new website and import that. So you don't have to do this over and over again. And then if you notice, if there was an issue that caused something, then you can roll this back if you want. So really cool, cool tools. And then they have some great tutorials on some of this information that we have just kind of covered the surface of. If you really want to dig down into some of the features of WP Rocket, then they have some great tutorials here that you can look at. And then you see from our dashboard, we can check and do quick actions like remove all cache files here. We can start the cache preloading if we ever want to, and then we can purge the content. And that's just if you want to like clean some things up. Like if you did a massive update to a lot of your files and systems, then you could go in, remove the cache, and then start the preloading cache again. All right, so now that we've made some of those other changes, let's just see if our load time has improved again. Again, if your site is has a lot more content and things like that, you're going to probably see a lot more changes on this. Since this is a demo site, we're seeing minor changes, but going from 1.54 seconds to 1.13 is still pretty good. So let's go ahead and start the test again to see how it's doing. And now you see that we've been able to improve our performance grade and reduce the page size and the load time just by going through some of those changes. Another way that you can see how your site is doing is by installing and activating Monster Insights. Monster Insights integrates Google Analytics with your website so you can see exactly how your site is performing, the users that are coming to your site, the pages that they're going to, the most popular publisher pages. You can also track your best performing affiliate links as well as so much more. To get started, just head over to monsterinsights.com and make sure you use promo code WPB VIP to get the best deal on Monster Insights. So let us know in the comments below, how was your before and after score? Did it help improve your site once you installed WP Rocket? And thanks for watching.